God bless you for taking a minute today. Let's call this early uh, Sunday Night Light. I tell you, I have really been overwhelmed with what I have been seeing both in the news and witnessing in the church, and I know you have too. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord God, that they'll get an understanding how important it is that we guard the gates. I want to talk about briefly for your Sunday night light. If you hear this before Sunday, so be it. But, I mean, I am fasting and praying that you will hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying concerning this message. Today I went to a wonderful meeting uh, to kind of get in, you know, in connection to see what the Lord, why the Lord was sending me there. But on the way to the meeting, he spoke a word to me about penetration. And I went, mm, penetration? Uh, he said that there should be a warning concerning willful penetration. And so that word really stuck in my spirit, uh, the word penetration. And so when I got there to the meeting, I kind of shared with them about that word and what the Lord was kind of reminding me about this penetration has a lot to do with gatekeeping. I know I've already kind of talked to y'all a little bit about that, but as I was in prayer, um, you know, for this message, and, and as he spoke to me about the gates, he said that the gates are wide open, and this is why the penetration, uh, I mean, an, an infectious type of penetration. And, you know, as a woman who may be in heat or a guy who is in heat, of course, many of them, and I'm going to be candid here for those that are adult prayerfully that's listening to this message, uh, that will use a condom to protect themselves. But see, what the problem is, is that the penetration, uh, what they don't understand is that just the, um, the willfulness to make a decision to be vulnerable, to have access to um, the body, uh, when we say that we have offered our bodies as living sacrifices, and we want to dibble and dabble a little bit. And so, but when the penetration takes place, this has allowed, uh, regardless if there's a condom or not, and as I begin to talk to the Lord, he said, my God, you've got to make sure that these young women and these men, especially these single preacher women, too, get an understanding. Um, and we might as well go and say some of the married ones who are tipping out. But we've got to get an understanding that when this opportunity comes for the enemy to penetrate, whether it's in your flesh or as the enemy comes into the church and penetrate and uh, move into a deceptive type of move, uh, there's an infection. That's the best way I can say it, what he was showing me. And so the enemy then begins to succeed in forcing its way in through the um, the very ones that they think that they can do it most of the time with. Most of the time, these are Korah types of spirits or Jezebelic type of leaderships that uh, this uh, penetration can come in. You know, so when this penetration starts to happen, there is an infection. Okay, and so many of the people are wondering why am I talking about probably when I brought up uh, penetration as it relates to the sexual connotation. What I'm getting at is that when you are in any type of uh, sinful mode as it relates to a sexual contact, uh, the penetration has already taken place in the spirit realm simply because you allowed, whether it was a condom or not, you allowed the penetration to come, and so now the in in the spiritual realm as, a, as it relates to sexual soul ties, they've already been developed. And so the same thing, let's turn to Jude real quick because I don't want to be on there long, but I want to make sure I obey God and give this message about how this penetration is at the gate, and the gate is not being guarded. And the reason why it's not being guarded is because we have allowed the enemy to come in for a couple of reasons. One, we compromise for filthy lucre's sake because a lot of the churches are emptying out. And so, therefore, uh, the leaders will let them come in, get uh, get leadership positions or whatever because they're tithing big or whatever to try to keep the doors open. But it ain't going to work no more. There is a lot that God is doing this last day, as you can see, because the gates are not being guarded. What the enemy is doing, he's coming in and he's permeating. That means he's spreading throughout. He's invading. He is in. 
affecting the very atmosphere where God's supposed to be resting and ruling. And so what I want to say about this is I begin to look at Jude. We'll talk about it a little bit deeper about the gate in just a few minutes because uh, I'm only going to be on here 15 minutes. I pray that I can get off here quickly because I'm hungry. And I had to fast, as always, to try to deliver uh, what he's asking me to show you as far as this penetration is concerned with this last thing. Now, in Jude, we're going to look at verse 4. It says, For there are, there are certain men crept in unawares. So this is the first penetration right here, crept in unawares, who were before an old ordain, of old ordain to this condemnation. Ungodly men turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here's the warning that I had to give you because of the willfulness, because somebody is not guarding the gates, and we already know it's going to be the leader, because, you know, the leader is responsible for the sheep. And so it goes on to say, well, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, Afterward, destroyed them that believed not, and the angels would kept not their first state. This their first estate, talking about the original place of God, but left their own habitation. He had reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, under the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going at the strange flesh, and we won't leave out strange fire for people that say that they're so anointed and actually they are of the enemy. They are Jezebelic and or Korah and Miriam and everybody else. But over to the fornication and going at the strange flesh and set forth for an example or set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, I also these filthy dreamers, mm -hmm. these people who are supposed to be there in charge, these filthy dreamers, these people who are supposed to be in leadership, defile the flesh. Why? Because they, dis they despise dominion. They despise the authority. And, and they speak evil of dignitaries. And so this area, what I'm trying to get into right now, is very important for us to look at. The Bible, if you jump over here in uh, the last couple of verses here, it says, How they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate, cause divisions themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your whole, most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some, here's the key right here, and of some having compassion, making a difference. And there we go. Others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. And I love this as we all say sometime before they close service. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. Amen and amen. But the gates are Sunday. They will Sunday. Mm. The gates are not being guarded. And so we have allowed the, the penetration to come in by these ungodly men, these that come in with uh, uh, prophetic lies, uh, and those that are coming in with uh, controlling or manipulative or narcissistic leadership that will not adhere to, how, how they say, confront and make sure that they protect the sheep, confront the enemy, and protect the sheep. And so we got to look at that the gates are not being guarded. And you know back in the olden days, as I told you all, all, over and over again, whoever guards the gates rule the city. And if we don't make sure that the gates are guarded, 
whoever is coming in is going to take control. This is the reason why many of the people are leaving because this penetration has caused them to feel that something is too heavy, something is confusing, something is too weighty. There's been a spiritual influence that have called the people to become depressed and are, and are oppressed to the point that they cannot uh, uh, seem to want to even stay any longer. They can't take it anymore. They're tired of feeling this impact that's causing them to feel drained, causing them to feel rejected or not understood or, a better word, misunderstood. And so this infection, this type of penetration, the enemy wants to continue to infiltrate the church. And so as we look at it, now, because of the gates are not being guarded, it's very important to understand. If you know that the stronghold uh, that is upon a church or the gatekeepers are not in position, I, I'm just behooping you based on what Jude is saying here. They're creeping in, and many of them are creeping in or working fast. They know how to sit right there and watch us. It's so sad that we have the enemy sitting right among us like Judas with Jesus. And we just sitting there going, oh, well, they'll leave eventually. No, 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 no. What they're there to do is divide and conquer. And if you're not going to watch how this penetration and do something about this penetration, what usually happens is it creates a gatekeeper. And what that gatekeeper does, it allows the thing to grow. It allows the thing to get root. And it begins to control. The gatekeeper controls the gate. And so there will be one issue after another. This is the reason why people are allowing people who should not be in position, who need counsel, those who may have issues with their being struggled with, whether their identity, they don't know if they're a woman or a man, and I'm not trying to get off on the, the gender identity issue right now. But we've got to understand that the church, the church today, this last day church, where these seductive, where these evil, where these manipulative, where these deceptive type of men and women, we're going to use that word to make sure that we don't leave out the woman as well, that have crept in. And the, the gatekeepers who are supposed to be minding the gate is not doing their job. And that is because how can a man lead someone when they don't even know how to go? They're not trying to grow so they would know how to protect the gate. And, you know, we got to look at if you've got one issue going on in your church already that's dealing with manipulation and conniness and all this kind of stuff, how do you expect God to uh, have mercy on you, and how do you expect God to remove the issue that's going on in the church when you don't want to recognize that this powerful demon, this powerful ruling spirit is already an appointed other demons to set God at the gate? So that means whatever you're blinded about, pastor, whatever you're blinded about, ministry leader, the devil already knows where you're weak at. So what he does is he allows these to creep in, penetrate the church, seduce you where you can't see, where you can't hear, where you can't understand, because now you're mesmerized with what money they got, you're mesmerized with the kind of service that they give you, because see, they already know what to do, they know how to smooth talk, they know how to come in and, and act like they can be there to serve you, or I'm going to you, and so on, I'm telling you right now, in this last day, you got to get a hold of the gates. Yeah, we got to know that in this last day, every gate that the enemy sets up camp, as they creep in, they're going to have one after another. And you've got to shut the gates of hell, open heaven, and during this attack that's on the Christians in this last day, you've got to know, unless you bind up these gatekeepers, clean the house again. If you have to put down, sit down, whatever lead it is, that you know that's being a Korah or a Jezebel or a Miriam or whatever, you got to make sure you call a spade a spade. you got to expect some heavy warfare about to come uh, within that body and be prepared to fight. Because why? In any war, there's going to be some casualties. But you can rest assured, if the gatekeeper is not on their gate, the ruling sphere is going to take over. Well, I think that's all i got to say right now. you got to understand that the penetration, that is willful, you can rest assured that those that have crept in, as Jude has said, but you've got to remember, we have to take uh, the responsibility for those who are weak, if you are the leader, you need to make sure that that penetration that you may not want to deal with because you think it may enter the church out, the devil is a lie.
The Bible is already making clear here, as Jude has said. And others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, even the garments started by the flesh. That means you hate even the very thing that you see. It's too many unclean churches today. It's too many churches playing games because of the fact that they're desperate to try to keep the doors open by this filthy lucre. I'm telling you right now, God is holding us accountable because the Penetration, ah, Sunday, they go Sunday, it's succeeding. The devil is puncturing holes, laughing at us as he's come in and penetrated the territory that God has given us to sanctify and deliver his people. God bless you. I pray this has helped you today. And remember, it's up to you to take control of the game and make sure that now the enemy knows that you are ruling and it is dying. God bless you. Please share this message.